Hey guys, this is the Hard Time Strongman Podcast, turning up a better class of man. And today, we have another DAS node for you. How to drive a stick. But first, the DAS node. First, the DAS node? No. But first, a dad joke. God. What makes someone a good baker? I don't know. They cater to your every need. Too tired for this. <laughs> I used to work in a shoe recycling shop. It was soul destroying. Oh my. Soul destroying. I can't. Who rescued the drowning pumpkin? The Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. The Muffin Man! No. Oops. The, oh, no. the Life Gourd. Oh, oh, I knew it was going that direction. <laughs> oh my god, that's so terrible. Mmm. Ah, so terrible. Um... How does the Navy get packages to their families? They lose them. Um, they ship them. God, that one was just bad. <laughs> How did Noah navigate at night? Floodlights. He used his floodlights. Wow. <laughs> mm. His well, floodlights. Yeah. Since we're in that time of year, what does a zombie vegetarian eat? What? Brains. Oh my. I can't. You're done. You're done. Guys, we're talking about how to drive a stick because dad episodes are episodes where you're, we teach you things that your dad should have taught you. What's the resemblance between a red apple and a green apple? Please stop. They're both red. Except for the green one. <laughs> What's the difference between red paint and green paint? The taste. <laughs> <laughs> I know that isn't it. <laughs> tell, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> no, that was perfect. <laughs> oh, I hate you. So good. I feel like I fried my last brain cells in Afghanistan, burning all those maps and CDs. Mm, right. I can't. I can't with you. Uh, okay. Guys, we're going to talk to you about how to drive a stick. For those who maybe didn't grow up. And stop. <laughs> Don't know the slave for a stick. It's a manual. We're teaching you how to drive a manual today. And that is a skill that is honestly way, way, way more perishable these days than I thought it would be. A lot of people are going to have a drive that, stick. The fact that we're talking about this makes me feel so old. Honestly. Yeah. So but. there was there was kind of a tongue in cheek joke going around there for a little while. Because car thefts were on the rise. People were saying, well, I mean, how do I protect my car, you know, from getting stolen? It's like, well, it's millennials. So drive a stick. <laughs> just get a stick. Yeah. But I saw it happen. I saw it happen on a, what was it? It was a freaking bait car. It was a bait car that was a stick. And like three dudes jumped in there, saw the stick, and they like bunch of it, and then they ran away. Like they, they oh. just froze up, didn't know what to do. It's like, oh, oh wow, this is that's painful. A, that's unfortunate. <laughs> 
Oh so man. Much. Yeah. So a skill that is becoming fewer and more far between between you know persons, which you know directly coincides with it being very, very valuable for you to know. Because I mean, you know, hell man, what you know, outside of vehicles, you know, like farm equipment. Uh yeah, that's you know, like yeah. industrial type equipment, like like a, a lot of this is gonna transfer over. You know, not to mention your older vehicles or you know, some luxury vehicles. It's just you know, you're you know, like you said, they're not really being developed all that much anymore, but at one point, you know, you were, if you didn't know how to drive a stick, you were excluding yourself from being able to drive, you know, half the vehicles on the road. Yeah. So, you know, extremely, and, you know, depending on, you know, your region, that still might be the case. So very important. This is a difficult class to give because this is a very, uh, kinetic skill. Yeah. And the, in the sense that, you know, you, you know, like laying out, like you need to do this in order to learn it and to, you know, keep the, keep the skill up. If you're not driving a stick, if you don't, you know, actually get hands on, there's only so much that you can clean off of, you know, two guys talking. Right. So exactly. But that being said, so difference between, uh, Manual transmission and an automatic transition or transmission rather. Third pedal. A third, a third, third pedal, pedal and a and a little grabby thingy. Yeah. <laughs> pretty pretty much it. So in a in in automatic transmission, as you drive, your vehicle will automatically go uh. into the separate gears that you need to go into in order to yep. make the thing with wheels go. Yeah. Technically it uh it disengages the clutch, shifts the gear for you, re-engages the clutch, all without you having to take your foot off the accelerator. Right, exactly. That all with not, without you having to do anything. Yeah. That is not what happens in a manual transmission at all. Right. You so time about three pedals. So manually. Right. So if you're used to driving an automatic transmission on the left side you have your brake on the right side you have your gas Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you stop and go with a manual or manual transmission you have three pedals to the very left you have your clutch in the center you have your brake for those to your right you have your gas without your clutch you don't do anything (laughs) yeah you're not going anywhere so you're just revving your engine. That's all you're doing. You can't even like turn the car on without that. Yeah, no, you need you. So you need to depress the clutch in order to actually start the vehicle. So I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to break this down in the most layman terms in an accurate way. The actual like using, you know, using the clutch in tandem with the transmission, the importance of everything. But for every sake, and so we don't get, you know, lost trying to teach people, you know, over auditory, a very tactile, very, you know, connect skill. Uh, we'll just go into the, I guess, I, I suppose the basics just of actually like getting in there and, you know, making your, your vehicle function. Right. Yeah. So like we said, you have your pedals, three pedals, first on the left, you have your clutch center. You have your brake, right? You have your accelerator as normal. Other difference, you're going to have a shifter. Now this may you know, change a bit depending on your, you know, make and model a vehicle, but most vehicles, you'll have the shifter in, you know, towards the center of the, of the cab itself towards the dash. And it follows a P or no, not PRND. So PRND being a automatic transmission. So park reverse neutral drive in a manual more often than not, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five reverse. So pulling the shifter all the way to the left and forward is gear one. Pulling that directly to the rear, so all the way to the left and to the rear is two. 
straight forward is three, straight rearward is four, to the right and up is five, and to the right and towards you, towards the back, is reverse. Now, when it's not engaged in any of those, or sixth, there is a possibility or six here. I mean, I mean, hell, do you can talk about semis who have, you know, Lord knows how many freaking yeah gears in there. Um, Maybe these but that'll be cars now have like eight years. But that'll be your basic, mm-hmm. your 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 yep. basic template, right? And then in the center, you know, not engaged anywhere is neutral. Okay, so I was so my old man taught me basic, you know, like by RPMs both the number range when to shift speed range when to shift and based off of sound like the actual sound of the of the engine so it might be different for you how you learned but i was taught you know sound depending at 3000 rpm is generally where you want to be when you shift uh for first gear 0 to 15, 20 is your range for first gear. Second gear, you're looking at, like I said, 15 to 20 up to 30, 35, 35 to 40, 45, 45, 50 to 50. Once you get to fifth gear, that's all you have to go with. So, you know, go go as fast as you need to, as fast as your vehicle's able. Obviously, you don't want to be cranking out, you know, 7,000 RPM. That's going to do a whole lot of not nice things. But you're you're looking for that sweet spot, you know, 20 to 30 miles per hour, you know, per per gear, Mm -hmm. depending on the vehicle. Right. Yeah. You'll also have a certain pitch, a certain sound when you hit 3000 RPM where you'll want to shift and that's why you, know, you don't see guys looking down at their shifter every time that they have to shift the vehicle you can go off of you know, your speed and sound. your and the sound that's how most people learn but go ahead and talk about actually learning how to drive a stick because for the uninitiated it is a hell of a lot of pain <laughs> it, so. it really really is and i kind of got kind of a crash course on it. I learned to drive originally on my buddy's um like mid 80s maybe 90s Jetta that had a manual. Okay. And I'll be I'll be honest, man, I killed that thing so fast, so quick. Like now I killed oh, it. Oh yeah, those like, those little zippy though. cars, they'll they'll like Oh yeah, oh, so killing it means that you killed the engine. So yeah. You you know, left the clutch too much. Car didn't get what it needed to, and yep. the engine dies. Just shut off. Yep. But I mean, I really got my first serious lesson when I was in my twenties. Um, and it was actually right when I bought my uh, ninety six Cobra, which was very very fast. <laughs> I I had gone from four cylinders to eight cylinders. And it was a manual, so I had to learn how to drive. Bold of you. Yeah. I learned how to drive a stick on a mid-90s range. On a Cobra. You're a nut. Yeah. Yeah, I had to transfer that over to the Cobra. But, um, yeah, it was, the hardest part was just getting the truck moving. So, I mean, the easy part, getting it started. You depress the clutch, you put your foot on the brake, you, you keep the clutch pressed all the way to the floor, turn the key. It starts. At that point, your car is 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 in neutral. You know, it's it's technically not in any gear. So right from there. So in neutral, your vehicle won't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the clutch is not engaged. It's it's not in gear. It's not going to go anywhere. It's the same thing as putting the car in. in. Yeah, in, in an automatic transmission. So um, when you start on when you hit drive, your vehicle automatically starts on one gear one. Mm-hmm. So when you release the brake, your car goes forward a little bit, right? And you know, depending on the car, it can you know go a little bit more, a little bit faster. Then you, mm-hmm. you start adding the, you adding your accelerator, and off you go. You can actually hear your vehicle shift gears, but nothing happens 
until your vehicle is in gear. Right. And that's the hardest part. That is the hardest part, at least, especially it was for me, having never had really a whole lot of experience with it. I mean, like I was 18, 17 or 18 when I first learned mm-hmm. how to do it. And then like, you know, I killed it a couple of times and I was just, I gave up, you know, it was, it was like, holy shit, this is going to be hard. But yeah. Going, I was like, okay, I have, I actually have to learn how to do this. I just bought a car with it required me to be able to drive this. Jeez. So yeah, it was all about like depressing clutch, putting the car in the first or putting the truck in the first, you know, taking my foot off the brake, putting my, taking that foot, putting it on the gas. And at the same time, applying gas, but also releasing the clutch. And geez, if you do it so slow, you're going to burn the clutch out. But if you do it too fast, you're just going to launch. And that's not what you so, want at all. So saying it like that, very complicated. It is. A lot of moving parts makes no sense. Yeah. Right. And it's if you're not just, used to it, it, it is yeah. a bugger. It's an it absolute is, bugger learning how to drive a stick. It is intimidating. It is very, so, very intimidating. So when you're actually getting into it, when you're actually you know, sitting in the driver's seat, ready to go, you have your vehicle on, so you depress the clutch. Turn the key, car starts. Yay. Yay. Now, you still have your clutch depressed. You're in neutral. Mm-hmm. You're going to the left and forward, or whatever version that is for you to get into first gear. Normally, it's all the way to the left and forward. At this point, nothing happens still. Yep. Because you have the clutch depressed. Nothing mechanically happens to your vehicle while your clutch is depressed. It's like a, it's like a grace zone, I guess. Mm -hmm. Nothing good, nothing bad. It's it just is. It's quote unquote neutral, right? It's just there. Now, as you depress, and this is different for every vehicle. Every single vehicle is to have a different point. But as you let go of that clutch, say you're in a parking garage, right, or on just flat ground anywhere, you have the vehicle in first. You have your clutch all the way in. Nothing's happening. You're just hanging out. As you let go of that clutch, it's going to hit a point. It is almost like a trigger, a wall, right? Where once you hit that point, your vehicle is going to start going forward. It's called a friction point. Friction point. Thank you. So your clutch is starting to quote unquote catch, Mm -hmm. right? Starting to catch that first gear. Now you have a grace period here. Where you're like, bum, 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 bum. Oh. your vehicle needs more, right? What does it need more of? It doesn't need more clutch. It doesn't need less clutch. It needs gas. It needs your or cowbell. Yeah. So you need you to depress your accelerator. So it's difficult because finding that balance between letting off on the, the clutch and going down on your accelerator, you have to find that balance. Because as you depress your accelerator, you have to let off on the clutch. And that point is very tricky to get a handle of when you're first starting out. Now, my old man, he taught me how to drive a, you know, because he brought me out on the road a few times. It was, you know, I was having a really rough time. <laughs> like I was, I was like wanting to quit. I was like, no, I'm like, this is too much. Like this is hard. Because I, I learned on a 94 Toyota pickup, you know, just the. Uh, little rally can i love that thing but my mom he brought me into our driveway where you know we were working on some more storage space and everything but we had a little hill yeah and or he you know he'd bring me to a hill or bring me to a hill you know i live in orange or hills everywhere but he'd bring me out to a hill you know that's safe right and then he said you're not allowed to touch the accelerator at all climb the hill old and what I had to do was just using the clutch, nothing else. I had to let off on the clutch enough to where I started climbing that hill with nothing. Wow. Once I could do that, then I graduated up to being able to use my accelerator to put up the hill. Dude. But, you know, by golly, I learned. So the best thing is it's a it's a balancing act. The clutch, that is, the, that is your fail safe. That is everything. If you panic in a manual shift, 
slam that clutch down and you can do whatever you need to do. You're not going to break anything. You're not going to like that is your get out jail free card. It doesn't matter what gear you're in. You will not kill it. If you have the clutch depressed, your vehicle will not die. As far as you know, shifting goes, you can right. still die if your clutch is depressed. <laughs> please don't. Please don't mix that up. Please don't die. Um, <laughs> please, don't, please don't die. Or do. <laughs> but yeah. I've. Hey guys, Seven from the Hard Time Strongman Podcast here to bring a quick word from our newest sponsor, Blackbeard Firestarters. We first saw Blackbeard Firestarter a few years ago, and after seeing what the product can do, it's been our kit ever since. Their Firestarter rope and their fire plugs are windproof, waterproof, dummy proof. They have an insane burn time, and like anything else that they offer, it just works. Besides their fire stars, they offer an arc lighter, ferro rod, stormproof matches, basically anything that you need to get a fire started. To better equip you, we cherry picked their inventory and made our hard time strongman fire kit. Basically our essentials kit for anything that you can need to get a fire started. But besides that, they're offering 10% off anything in their store when you use the code STRONGMEN. We love the guys at Blackbeard Firestarter. We love what they're doing. We trust them and we trust their products. And we honestly can't recommend them enough. Make sure to check them out online at blackbeardfire.com or on Instagram at blackbeardfire. Huge shout out to the guys at Blackbeard Fire for working with us and for bringing the fire. As always, guys, stay in the fight. Hey, everybody. This is 6 and 7 with the Hard Time Strongman Podcast. We are coming to talk to you about our Patreon and Discord. Hey, guys. Our patrons get early access to all of our episodes they get all of our exclusive pre and post shows, all of our spicy takes, all of our rabbit holes that we go on, everything that we want to include in the episode, but we can't because we need to stay on topic. And soon enough, we'll be offering digital downloads, guides, everything that we've been working on in the background will soon be available to our patrons. So make sure to check it out. And come hang out with us on Discord. Speaking of the spicy stuff. This is where we discuss most of it. Once you're there, you will get access to all of our in-depth discussions, including stuff like homesteading, fieldcraft, medical, camping, communications, shooting. You like ARs? Come talk to us about it. You like 4x4 vehicles and prepping? Come talk to us about it. You like Tannerite, Thermite, Napalm? Come talk to us about it. All of the campfire talks that would get us kicked off of other platforms, it's right there in our Discord. Come join our community. We're active on Discord every day. We're interacting with members constantly. We have guys from every walks of life coming to contribute their expertise to all of these various fields and subjects that we've been talking about. Come join the watch the Discord. Come join the Discord. Join our community. Build up that better class of man. Now back to the episode. So. <laughs> deep press. <laughs> hey, patrons. Um, <clears throat> woof. but to press the clutch, you're going to let go a little bit. It's going to start to boom, 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 boom. When your vehicle starts to shudder and you know, sound the boom, 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 that means that you need to you know, give it some gas. Depress the accelerator. As you're doing that, let off the clutch a little bit more. Don't jerk one way or the other. Don't, you know, like you said earlier, don't try to, you know, be fast and furious in here. You're not Vin Diesel. You know, yeah. don't slam it. Um, but slowly, smoothly. You know, nice, easy motion and off and away you go. You're going to find that first gear does not get you far. Like I said, you're going to get, you know, maybe 15, 20 miles an hour and then you're going to not go a whole lot faster, but your RPMs are going to go a whole lot higher. Yep. And I'm assuming that you like this vehicle at least a little bit. So you're going to upshift. You're going to depress your clutch, you're going to pull the shifter down into second gear. You're going to do the same thing. This time, though, you have a lot more grace. It is a lot easier to shift from first to second. Don't just pop it. Yeah, don't <laughs> just pop it. You, you have a lot a more lot grace. Because you're, you're already going. Moving. Yeah. The hardest part is getting going. 100% the hardest part is getting going. We're not talking about hill starts, but as far as flat ground goes, the hardest part is getting the car or the vehicle moving. Once you get that, everything else is, is kosher. It's so easy. Yeah. 
and you know, like we said, you're looking for you know certain mile an hour ranges, you know, your left and rights respectively for each mm-hmm. gear. Well, luckily, normally that coincides with the gear you're in. So first gear, you're not going to be springing into the twenties too off high. You're going to no. go down to second gear. Second gear, you're going to be mostly in the twenty mile an hour range. Third gear, thirty. Fourth gear, forty. Fifth gear, on and up. Yeah, you know, fifty plus, and then obviously reverse you know please don't be going 50 miles an hour in reverse i don't know how you did that but stop it yeah. um make it easier skin people you know, but away you go downshifting mm. is pretty much the same thing but in reverse you want to go into that a little bit i i mean as far as i can remember it's the exact same thing it's just yeah, putting your reverse it's, it's, and just going. It's the it's the same thing, but in reverse, right? So if you're in fifth gear, right, you're going highway speeds, you fall off, you know, onto your exit, and you start slowing down. Your vehicle is going to start doing the shutter thing. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. because think of the clutch like a gate, or 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 uh, what am I trying to say? Like a greeter, like a like a like a doorman. Think of your think of your clutch like a doorman, right? So as you depress the clutch, he opens the door. You can go into first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever you want. Right. But as you're shifting up, pull that clutch, he opens the door, you go in, close the door. You know, you're in a new room, you're in a new gear, and you're good to go. As soon as you get to the point to where you need to leave that room, you need to leave that gear, then you need to open up that door Mm -hmm. and pass through it. So same thing, your vehicle will start to shudder, you'll, you know, hear, you'll feel it. It's a great indicator that you need to go. I don't watch my RPMs too much when I'm downshifting because it you know, doesn't really matter. No. That mainly matters for upshifting. But although, you know, if your RPMs, when you downshift, go up into like the red, then yeah, you probably need to be paying attention. Don't be downshifting when you don't need to. Exactly. So thank you. That's, that's a great point. So if you downshift when you don't need to, your vehicle will let you know. So don't go from <laughs> fifth to third, right? It may just so, let you know by way of your engine exploding. <laughs> right. So this isn't something that you can skip gears on. You know, don't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, this is something where, you know, you need to go through the motions every single time. That's why it's so nice to have a automatic transmission because you don't have to worry yeah. about it. Don't have to worry because about it. Because as soon as you have a manual transmission, you're working to, to drive. Yes. You're You're doing a lot to keep that vehicle where it needs to be. That's and part it, of the, that's part of the trade-off, but you have a lot more control over your vehicle, which a lot of you like. I prefer, I prefer manual transmissions because I have a lot more I control do, over my vehicle. Yeah, I do too. It's just, you know, driving in Dallas traffic when, you know, I had to, and now d- driving down here, it's like, it's, it's not, it's not conducive to having a manual. Transmission. Oh man, country living, country living. I'll do manual oh all, day, but, all day, but all yeah, city living. It's it's a whole other monster. I mean, you can't do anything. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you get on the interstate and the interstate becomes standstill, tra- standstill traffic. Looking at you, Texas. Freaking 114 and 121 up there in DFW. Well, you're trying to turn. You're trying to shift and drink your coffee and your girlfriend doesn't want to shift for you because she gets freaked out by manual transmissions. It's not a good deal. <laughs> hey, man, not- I used to be able to I used to be able to drive with my knee. And still shit yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Well, I used to have my coffee in my first two fingers, and then the other three I would have on my shifter. I would just do what I need to do. Ballsy. That's brave. But, oh man, you remember my my old Jeep? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think it was awesome. <laughs> that thing, it was great. That thing was something all right. Oh man, we were freaking out because we had that secondary uh accelerator <laughs> on the shifter, didn't know what it was for the longest time. It's like, why are my RPMs still going up? I'm stopped. God, I love that car. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah, dude, that was wild. When we figured it out, it's like, whoa, I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> a little freaking assister. Yeah, that was. I think it was I so never cool. used it, but it was cool to have. Probably my favorite, like, quirky thing in that in that car was the uh, the rear view mirror, the three six, like the panoramic. Oh my god! Uh, rear view mirror on that thing. That thing was sweet. Like, why did we need that, dude? You could just look up and you could see 180 degrees. 
all at the same time. It's like, this is awesome. <laughs> like, Stupid. I don't know. I don't know where you bought this, but I need it. Like, this is cool. I need this on everything. Oh, man. All right. But, but yeah, besides that, what I miss. I mean, honestly, it's it's this is one of those it's easy to talk about. Like, it's hard to do. It is. It is very, very easy to just be like, here's how you do it. It's another thing entirely to go out and actually do it. So go out, find you somebody who has a manual and is willing to let you destroy their clutch and flywheel. No, no. Let, let them be willing to teach you. You don't have to destroy any clutches. Just take you your don't time. Have to, do it slow. But you're probably going to. Just take your time. Do it slow. I would recommend if you're teaching somebody, have them just start out with the with the clutch. Don't let them touch anything else for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first step is just getting it moving. You got to mm-hmm. learn how to get freaking thing moving. Yep. Once you and get that, freak out a little bit because they're gonna hit the accelerator like they normally do in a in an automatic. It's gonna boom. Your your RPM is gonna go mm-hmm. wild. Yeah. They're gonna freak out. But the thing is, like I said. You know, nothing happens without the clutch. So if you're neutral and you hit the gas, your RPMs are going to fly, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're in first in a manual, you have your clutch depressed, you hit the gas, you're boom, you're going to fly. But as soon as it you hit that friction point, your RPMs are boom, they're going to hit down because you're actually engaging the vehicle. You're engaging, you know, that gear. So the the engine the hardest part put those revs. The hardest part is getting people to conceptualize what they're doing. That's the hardest part about driving a stick is understanding that you are doing what the vehicle normally does manually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once they get that through their heads, then, you know, it's no different than driving anything else. It's a a few extra steps, but you're not going to be driving on how you're, you know, as your vehicle's trying to figure out when it needs to shift. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I hate that. Uh, but that is that is very very true because it's like how often are you driving down the road and your engine just goes into like eco mode you know and it's it's for no reason it's 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 in like freaking sixth gear and you're doing thirty miles an hour so it can save gas I I get it it's great for the environment but at the same time going up the hill yeah yeah downshift stop it downshift (laughs) yeah stop doing that don't don't make me have to throw you into lower gear yeah but. Like we said at the beginning, guys, this is a very tough episode to do just because, you know, we know we know we are so incredibly limited in this. You know, if I was, Mm -hmm. you know, hanging out with you over the weekend, teaching how to drive a stick, I could do it. No sweat. But, you know, trying to teach you over voice is a is a tough call. So. Find a buddy, find a buddy who has a manual. You know, have them teach you because it Mm -hmm. it is a lifelong skill. Is something that you know is being lost currently and you know is so so limiting to you. So get out there, learn how to do it. It's hey. not the hardest thing in the world, but it does take a little bit of finesse. You have anything? I don't. It's worth it's a definitely a skill that's worth learning, you know. A hundred percent. Well, guys. Short and sweet, but we're the Hard Time Strong Men Podcast, teaching you how to drive a stick. Training up a very classy man. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. Hey guys, this is Six and Seven with the Hard Time Strong Men Podcast. Wanted to take a second to do a mental health check in and to tell you all about the 988 Crisis Lifeline. So, the 988 Lifeline is a national network of local crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the United States. You can reach the Lifeline at 988lifeline.org or you can call or text 988. To get help, to get someone real on the phone. Every struggle is different. Every struggle is hard. But you are not alone in whatever you're going through. As someone who has used the 988 crisis line, 
I fully recommend that if you're feeling any of those feelings of depression, suicide, hopelessness, get in touch with them immediately. They will help you. They will listen to you. Once again, guys, you can reach the lifeline at 988lifeline.org or you can call or text them at 988. As always, guys, stay in the fight. Stay in the fight.